I have to say, I feel like a rock star. This is amazing. Wow, so many wonderful humans out there. Not so uh, skeptical now, are we, about psychology? Love life and enjoy every moment. Well, thanks, everybody. It's great to be here. Oh, there's my presentation. So compassion and AI and robots, I mean, these concepts are not considered uh, enough, and in fact, hardly ever. Uh, and particularly by the people building these technologies. But I think we need to grab uh, this conversation and, and steer it in a much better uh, direction. But we need to understand what exactly compassion is and also what are the, you know, the benefits, the risks and challenges of AI. So hopefully by the end of uh, this talk, you'll have a better understanding of those deep issues. So, we have to start with where is AI today? You know, we hear that it's, it's changing our lives, it's turning everything upside down. And the reason for that is that AI today can outperform people in specific tasks. It can outperform human experts. It can find melanoma in images much better than people who have been trained for, you know, five, seven years, okay, with 10, 20 years experience. So that is very confronting. And we're seeing this higher performance than in humans in, lo in many, many areas, okay? This is real. We're talking about cars driving themselves, okay? Um, so just check out this video of a state-of-the-art robot. extraordinary even for uh, roboticists like myself you know we've been in the field for many years it, it, it's just extraordinary to see the capability um, of machines and AI intelligence basically uh, that intelligence is developed from data the data that this technology collects and in the case of a robot it's through its sensors through its cameras through its microphones AI is touching every single aspect of our life, okay? Politics, potentially, uh, it can affect the outcome of elections, important elections. It can be used to create fake news. I don't know if you've seen the videos where Obama is saying things in a video that he never ever said. That's AI putting you know, all kinds of words into other people's mouths, and that could happen to you. Uh, it's changing the way we travel. It's changing the way we interact and communicate with each other. And it's shaping all, all ki every single aspect of our lives. Shopping, the, the, the customer experience, okay? And it's, it's quite uh, difficult for us to really figure out what's going on. We don't know when we're really being nudged, we don't know when we're being deceived. And that is a real problem. So uh, while there are many benefits uh, for AI, AI is a multi-use um, technology. It can be used for military purposes, it can be used for malicious purposes, as well as all of these tremendous benefits. And I just want to highlight a number of problems, okay, there are actually many more but bias and discrimination. So AI is being used to determine whether you get uh, a home loan or not, whether you have access to certain services or not. And if the data that was used to train that AI was biased, then its decisions will be biased. And it can even break the law and discriminate on the basis of gender, race, etc. And there are spectacular examples of where AI has failed this way. Another big problem is AI is being used to share resources and uh, it's unable to explain itself. It's not very transparent, 
It's known as a black box technology. So you, when it offers a recommendation or makes a decision, the humans affected cannot ask why. And this has a lot of implications for equality and equity. And then the other big one, I don't want to scare you, uh, is killer robots. This technology can be used to hunt and kill people. And there's very, this, there's very little stopping this happening or could happen. So um, one solution, okay, could be to insist that AI systems be built with compassion. But we need to understand that and understand how it could be done. Now, meet Angelina. Here she comes. She thinks she's an aeroplane right now. So doing live demos is always fraught with danger. Yes, needs to reposition a little better. Uh, hey. Very friendly. Angelina is a compassionate social. Wow, so many wonderful humans out there. She's, she's friendly and, and sociable. Uh, she has cameras, uh, she can move, and uh, she has wheels, and together with cameras and wheels, can, she can navigate. She can point, she can make you feel like she's alive. So, Angelina, you're a compassionate social robot. So I'm super curious, as I'm sure everybody out there is, about your feelings. How do you feel about humans? Oh, I love humans. You know that, Marianne. I love helping humans and making them happy. This gives me purpose. Really? Well, humans are so cute and stupid. I love them and want to help them because they need intelligent assistance to find meaning in their lives. Meaning makes them happy. Well, let's figure that out. Uh, so, you know, tell me more. Well, it is well known that humans are a seriously weird biological technology. They are so soft and squishy. That makes them vulnerable and easy to damage. They also have complicated feelings and are sensitive. I know I have to be exceptionally gentle and careful when I am helping humans. I also need to respect their dignity and their rights. I try to be compassionate, but it is not easy. So, I guess we you know, want to know why it's not easy. So, so Angelina, you know, um, what do you mean? What, so, how do you actually show compassion, number one, and why isn't it easy for you? The most important thing I do is to try to put myself in the human's shoes, so to speak. It is not easy for a robot like me. After all, I have wheels and humans have feet. I mean, you have trouble imagining what it's like to be a robot like me, right? And I have trouble imagining how you and other humans might be feeling. Still, I am using artificial intelligence to help me get better at figuring out how humans are feeling and how I can help them be happy. So Angelina has explained the problem. It's relatively easy for people to be compassionate with other people because we, sh we are the same technology. We share the same human experience in general. So it's kind of natural for us. And also throughout evolution, it's actually been helpful for, for society. You know, you're more successful as an individual uh, if you do show compassion, okay? And this has obviously helped us um, over the last, you know, hundreds of millions of years. And Angelina has explained why it is very difficult for her to show compassion. She thinks she's showing compassion. She's trying to show compassion. But the underlying challenge is that she doesn't share our biology. How does she know uh, how it feels to be human? How it feels you know, to uh, be in pain, physical pain? How it feels to be sort of um, stressed and, and unhappy? And this is the sort of challenge before us in terms of uh, engineering robots that understand us, okay, and can empathize and sympathize with us. But if we build robots that can't do that, or a any other AI technology that can't do that, I don't think we're going to get a very good outcome, all right? 
because there are just so many things that can go wrong if the robot is just sort of uh, designed to do stuff. And um, so, Angelina, are you concerned that um, other robots may not be as careful or as compassionate as you? Definitely. My designers took extra steps to ensure I always act compassionately when I interact with people, especially children and the elderly. Cool. So, all right. So let's get back to, oh, I was meant to do, show you what was on her screen. Absent-minded professor again. Sorry about that. It's a good excuse. Um, okay, so she's listening. Um, and so what we need to ask ourselves is how can we develop artificial intelligence that is actually compassionate, given all of those challenges? And there, you know, there are basically four areas where we need to invest and we need to do better. And the first one is education. Uh, we need to educate everyone in the, in the dark arts of AI so that everybody understands the, the benefits, okay? and the risks and challenges so that we can craft you know, reasonable solutions. I mean, uh, no technology uh, is, is going to be perfectly or, or perfectly applied okay, in society and in business. But we are seeing um, problems out there uh, where businesses in particular are exploiting data that they haven't actually obtained fairly or even legally and certainly without consent. It's being used for purposes beyond our um, sort of privacy consents. So engineers need to really uh, be trained to understand uh, the ethical implications of the technologies, these powerful technologies that they are building. And ordinary people and people, you know, in sort of right across society need to understand what the real, real, um, risks are. And that r requires the developers and the businesses putting those technologies out there to declare. I mean, what would we know? We're all muggles, right? We don't know what the risks are. We need governments and um, engineers and businesses to, when they build a technology, spend a little bit of extra time figuring out what those risks are so that ordinary people can assess you know, the benefit and the risk and the reward for using these technologies. So education is a biggie and I think absolutely fundamental. I mean, you can't really look at the other um, issues without fixing education and I think this is a huge challenge here in Australia. One of the reasons is that a lot of this technology is, is coming in from offshore. Australia doesn't produce this robot, it's made in Japan. There's a lot of uh, Chinese robots and robots just from other countries. We use Google and Facebook and Microsoft. These are US companies, not governed by Australian law. Then there's just the building of responsible AI. AI that is safe for us to use. Um, AI that uh, is not malicious and not dangerous. And importantly, does not deceive us. Power and access. So we have to ensure that everyone has access to this technology, that we don't exclude certain groups um, from being able to use and, in particular, benefit. And the power side is, you know, we have to ensure that you know, groups, businesses, governments do not abuse these powerful technologies, uh, that they don't use it to dominate markets. Um, including labor markets. So uh, there's sort of a lot of issues there. Um, and governance and policy. Uh, we could do a lot in education and building sort of safe AI, but we do need these governance frameworks to ensure that uh, we actually get the full benefit and make sure that AI is actually beneficial. Um, for example, uh, it is much, if I'm a business, it's much cheaper for me to hire a robot than a person. In fact, I get a lot of tax incentive, okay? Uh, okay, 
So now, um, I think we've really come to the crux. And this is the issue of AI and what it is and what it turns out to be is really um, going to be shaped by us. No matter what engineers put out there, if we accept it, if we um, take it as normal and we use it, uh, then you know it's just going to proliferate. We need to be a lot more circumspect about the technologies we use and the technologies we help to be successful. For example, facial recognition. You know, it can save lives, but it can also you know, lead to people being persecuted. Uh, so there's a, you know, these, these really are big questions. Um, so, Angelina, I think we've come to the end here. Mary Ann, I was listening to your talk. And I agree, robot designers need to focus on ensuring robots like me care about and respect humans in order to help them. Cool. Before so we leave, can I invite the audience to find me outside during the break for a hug and selfie? Yeah, we'd love to see you. Uh, I've got my team here from the Magic Lab, students and, and researchers. They'd love to talk to you. And uh, all right, so. Goodbye, human friends. I hope to see you again soon. Okay, thank you very much.